to church this morning. We're glad that you're here. What? We're glad that you're here. We'll just bear in mind that this is a brand new building and we're getting used to things. Uh, there may be some adjustments that will need to be made as we go and uh, all those things, but we'll work through. We're glad that you're here. And, uh, for those of you, I know Father's Day, Father's Day and Mother's Day are one of those funny holidays, and funny days, and it's good to remember, but sometimes, uh, depending on your background, it may not be the most enjoyable uh, day to remember, but uh, we are thankful that no matter what our earthly fathers are like, our heavenly father is one that never leaves us or forsakes us and loves us unconditionally. Uh, so this morning, we're going to be having a, at some point when the service is over, uh, every father that's present has a gift. And uh, so you can come up, it's, it's a travel mug with, you can pick in there. Uh, some of them have coffees in there, some of them have hot chocolates in there. For those who we question their salvation when they say they don't like coffee, but you know, that's, that's okay. That's a good time in God. And uh, there's, we provide that for you. No, no. I don't think so. I just muted. No. These are the weird adjustments that we talked about. See no way. See no way. There's a level on that. I'm just not saying that. Uh, Thank you. funny things with the sound system that they tested everything before in between the time before everyone came in here and it all worked it all came in and I don't know what you did to it but <laughs> no I'm just joking um, so that type of stuff happens uh, but we're glad that you're here and we'll be celebrating Father's Day through the uh, the service there's going to be a presentation a video about Happy Father's Day in there with some uh, funny lessons that some of them are done in a funny way, but they're good lessons if you're a father to learn. And then later on, where we're still emphasizing our missions time, um, there'll be we have a video update from Portillo. And so you're going to be able to, hopefully, Lord willing, as long as the video and sound and you know, all that comes together and works, uh, you'll be able to hear directly from Brother Portillo um, about what's taking place and update on their family's health as they've recovered from COVID. And, uh, and the ministry there. And so we're glad you're here. Uh, be a little bit flexible. Bear with us as we as we grow and make changes. And um, speaking about mission, look around. There's plenty of room now, right? Plenty of room to invite people. Uh, have have places for them. And uh, believe it or not, there's as many chairs out today as there were usually out at the hall, uh, the the other hall. And so the Lord's just Provide us with love of space and uh, more places to put people in the region of the gospel. All right, so let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. And then Brother June uh, will come. Let's move around and find people. Um, Everybody's got a new spot to sit. Everybody's got a new spot to sit. Like I'm used to where everyone sits. Okay. Now Brother June will come and lead us in some songs and uh, we'll go on with our service. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the privilege we have to be here. And Lord, thank you so much for all that you provided for us in this place, and Lord, we pray that as we take this time to remember our earthly fathers and thank you for what you've given us in them, and 
Ultimately, though, remember you as our Heavenly Father, the one who provided us with salvation and all that we have. And Lord, may we be thankful for that. Lord, we just pray to do this service now in Christ's name we pray.
channel. We're continuing on. Uh, glad to be here. Just a couple of things, just to, so you know where things are. Um, if you do need to use the toilets, so we just go out the doors that you came in, and immediately to your left and right are men's and ladies' toilets. And then when we, in a few moments, in a little bit, right before the message, we'll be dismissed for Children's Church. Um, children's Church will be dismissed, and they can go to the back of the hall. There's a set of double doors right to my right, which would be your left side. And you go through those doors, and Children's Church will be right out there um, for them in a few moments. All right? So, just so you know where, where things are. And then in a few moments as we get going in the service, uh, we'll close this door um, leading in, and then if someone's late, they can come in. Uh, it just works better if we keep the door closed um, for the air conditioning to regulate better. And uh, so we'll be there for that. Uh, we'll still find out how good it is when summertime comes. Um, but we're thankful for what we have and for the provision that God has given us now. As it is Father's Day, I looked around and I uh, found a video that kind of, in a, in a fun way, uh, presented some good things about Father's Day and some things that uh, we as fathers need to be reminded. And, um, and it's done in a way where you might get a good laugh out of it, but you just think about what, what the video is saying. And uh, hopefully we can uh, implement that into our lives as that. All right, so if we can give that a go, this is a trial. So what does it mean to be a dad? I mean, at its core, what does it mean to be the best dad you can be? I mean, a dad's dad. Thank you. Sometimes being a dad means you play hide and seek before breakfast. You're so easy to find. Maybe because I'm three times your size. <laughs> you know, there's more to be a dad than glad when you get in the wearing socks and say, oh, tell them that joke. Don't talk with your mouth full. Hey, I thought you that. Go pick up your brother, would you? Ryan, Dad says to get up. Bears, pancakes! You know, being a dad isn't easy. It's like being under a constant job evaluation with managers who are much, much shorter than you. So we should strive to be the best dad we can be. Because being a dad is a gift and a privilege. It's not an inconvenience or a burden. Lawn care? That's a burden. So let me tell you some things I've learned along the way. Ryan, it's time to get up, buddy. Kids need you to be present. They spell love T-I-M-E. If you get a chance to jump on the trampoline, go jump on the trampoline. It's not going to kill you. Probably. Be your kid's biggest encouragement. I love to catch my kids doing something great, and I love to be intentional about letting them know that I notice. And here's another one. I love when it isn't easy. But even when they're being annoying, I try to be slow to end them. Do I do it perfectly? You bet I do not. I even do it. That's why it's important they're not number one. Right, champ? He's still asleep. It needs to be obvious that my relation with God comes first. And through that relationship, I can gain wisdom and strength and perspective. So don't sweat it. We all mess up. I know I've messed up a lot, and that's okay. The key is when you mess up is to ask for forgiveness. That's what a real dad does. Oh, and the jokes. Got any new ones? Yeah, did you hear the one about the pizza? It's probably too cheesy. Don't forget about the cake. things in there. Now, let's see if this works now. It's totally story time. Let's see how it works. Alright, if they can get it up there, it's wonderful. If they can't get it up there, we're going to continue on uh, with the children's story time. Now, we're in the judges, and we're in the different judges. There's a judge in the, in the book of Judges named Shamgar. Oh, uh, there we go. If we could go to the next photo. I don't have the picture on me. There we go. Um, all right, we'll stay there. Now, Shamgar did not have a normal weapon. 
He did not have a sword. He did not have a spear. He did not have those types of things. He had what is known as an ox goat. Now, there's not a lot in the Bible about Shamgar. Matter of fact, it's probably only like a verse or two. Uh, but this ox goad would is what you would use if you had, say, ox pulling a cart, and you wanted. And they decided, have you ever been on a riding a horse or something, or been around using a, a mule or a donkey to pull something, and they just decide that they no longer want to move anymore. And they just sit there. And no matter what you do, no matter what you say, they're not moving. Well, an ox goad had a little point on it that you poked them. Now, you didn't, like, stab them or something, but just enough that, you know, behind the leg that they knew that they were supposed to move, and they got moving again. Well, that's what Shamgar had. Well, one day, if you go to the next one, uh, one day, uh, Shamgar was very skilled with his ox goad. And there was about 600 Philistine soldiers who came. Because what the soldiers would do, they would all let the Israelites, it seemed to be a common thing in the book of Judges, do their crops and raise everything and do all the hard work. And when it was time to harvest the crops that they were harvesting, they would send their army in and they would take all their food. And so they came to Shamgar's house and they were going to take his food from his farm. And the Bible says, with the ox goat alone, he killed 600 Philistine soldiers that came after him and his food. And then, uh, so that's how he helped deliver them from the Philistines. Now, if one guy, if any, if, if any of those soldiers escaped and got back to tell the rest of the army, uh, what happened to all your, your people that went out to get, oh, they were all killed. Would you want to be the one to escape? And said, how did you get killed? Well, he killed us all with an ox goad. We had spears and swords and, and shields, and, and he got us with an ox goad. Well, God helped him. And uh, so that's some, some things that we can see about the book of Judges and, and this person of Shamgar. And now, you may not have an ox goad. Hopefully, you don't have an ox goad. Uh, because some of you, I want to trust near me with an ox goad. I know you too well, okay? Uh, no ox goes a lot of Ben's can, okay? No, no ox goes. Uh, but anyways, but you do have something else with a point in your, that you can use, a pen or a pencil. And you can use that in a very powerful way. Because you can write down scriptures and memorize scriptures and hide God's word in your heart. So that that way, you have God's word with you even when you don't have the Bible with you. So that way, when you are tempted to sin... You can quote God's word just like Jesus did when Jesus was tempted by the devil to sin. And he quoted God's word to do that. So let me challenge you in that way. Now, a couple of announcements. Tonight, our service is at 5 o'clock. And then if, a few, if there's anyone that wants to, tonight after church, uh, we'll pack everything up. And if you want to, stay a little bit later and play some basketball. Uh, you're welcome to do so. If you do... Please bring appropriate shoes to change into uh, to play basketball with. You probably shouldn't be running and doing all that type of stuff in our church shoes on the basketball court. And uh, we'll spend some time fellowshipping. We can play some basketball. We can have some good times. And then immediately after service this morning, uh, there will be cakes available. There's a blueberry cheesecake. There's a salted caramel cheesecake. And then there is a chocolate mud cake. No cheesecake there. Um, that we'll celebrate Father's Day with as well. And if you do come and play basketball tonight and there's any cake left over, it'll still be in the fridge. So then that way, you know, if you're playing and hungry, I don't know, I know if I'd recommend you too much cake and running around. Uh, but anyways, I will have that uh, tonight as well. And then if there's fathers that come tonight and they come this morning, uh, they can have cake as well. And uh, so there's some things coming up. One other thing coming up. Um, as many of you know, we've been praying on Wednesday nights for the church that I come from, that my wife and I were sent from, as they were seeking to find a new pastor. And uh, when the Lord provided a new pastor for our church, and so I was talking to him last night, late last night, early this morning, and uh, I've asked him and he's agreed to. So can I encourage you, even if you don't normally come out on Wednesday nights, 
on Wednesday night, the 15th of September, uh, in our Zoom prayer meeting of Bible study. Uh, my pastor will be bringing the message for us. And so, you'll get to meet him. I'm glad. I'm excited. And um, we have a lot of fun. Uh, I've, I've never physically met him except for on a phone call and a video call. Uh, but we seem to get along pretty good. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to meet him and to bring the Bible study for us. Um, he's a bit of a different type of guy. Uh, he's very excitable and uh, a very, very neat guy. And uh, one of his hobbies and his biggest outreaches is teaching and training martial arts and MMA fighters. Um, and so when you look at him, you'll say, no, he doesn't. He does. Um, and, and there's a lot of people who's led the Lord that way. And so I've been told now, uh, if you go to our home church with a lot of young guys that he's training, and so you probably don't want to try to steal the offering when they're uh, cheers, uh, just to say that. And uh, it'll be a good time uh, for us in the church to be able to meet him and him to meet you and be able to pray together and all those types of things. Now, if you have your Bibles and you open them to Psalm 126, Psalm 126, uh, we're going to be having our scripture reading at this time. Everybody. As Pastor said, Psalm 126 is where we're reading, and we'll be reading the whole psalm. Starting from verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that they grieved. Then was our mouth filled with laughter, and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goes forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Amen. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of his word.
Right. Um, at this time, if you have your young ones that would like to be involved in Children's Church, they can be dismissed at this time to go with Emily and Katie, and they'll head on back to the Children's Church time. And then right before the message this morning, we've got about a six or seven minute video update from Brother Portillo in Argentina. And uh, so if we could have that at this time, and we'll wait just a moment, if we, in a moment we'll have that. And um, if you just pause for a second. If we just pause for one minute, one second. There we go. Uh, he recorded it on his phone. And uh, for some reason, it's not automatically flipping the normal. And so, uh, you know, if you just want to <laughs> that and just listen in, uh, it doesn't affect the words. It just kind of affects the, the angle of looking at Brother Portillo. But you can see what he looks like if you turn the right way. Um, and so we'll take a few moments just to be blessed with the update from their family. Okay. In a difficult year, I guess, with the pandemic, things are bad for COVID. You asked me how COVID uh, situation has affected, I guess, the uh, ministry. And uh, I think it's may maybe in two ways. It is a sense of uh, panic or fear uh, from the general public. And some some kind of fear as well from the members of the church. And also, obviously, the uh, protocols and all these restrictions that the government has uh, placed uh, really among everyone. Uh, therefore, the uh, preaching of the gospel, you know, house by house, and, uh, by fear people don't want to receive you in the houses or they stop you know, talking to you in the street. And then, um, some members of the church, they're just uh, misinformed or really you know, very, uh, very mature. Uh, they just don't want to come to church. You know, they're right on the, until these things passes, they say that they want, to stay, uh, they want to stay away from church. Obviously, it's been that long that many of us have you know, come back and, and just realized that this is part of life. In, to us, you know, as, uh, my wife and I, we, uh, we've been affected in the way that um, obviously we're being foreigners and, and someone that might be respectful of the uh, authorities and so on, obviously we don't want to come and, and bring too much attention to us or to the church in that sense. And so we have to be very careful how we thread this line. And uh, for the other parts of the things, you know, that uh, we ourselves had the issue of COVID, and by the grace of God, for us, was just very mild. Uh, I myself, we just had uh, three or four days of really body aches and headaches and so on, and then just uh, as it came, also, you know, went away. We only knew that we had that because we had to have the. Uh, and the test as we come back to the province in which we live. Uh, but once we, we knew and then we had to communicate to the church, uh, many people in the church uh, sort of, you know, they didn't take it right somehow. There is a kind of a stigma attached to those ones that um, go freely about, and those ones that you know, get the virus, you know, it's like there's something wrong with you. Uh, but apart from that, we've been, we've been okay by the grace of God. You know, I've been saying all the things last uh, summer, you know, closing last year, beginning this year, uh, is when we had the most you know, baptisms. I think we baptized about 26 people uh, within the three ministries. Uh, I guess that was something positive. Uh, people really realized that, you know, things can come from bad to worse, really, uh, really good people. And, and so we are uh, just maintaining, you know, the, we're pressing on in the, in the way of those ones that want to stop and, and listen and, and be told, you know, that there is a God and that there is a, a time in which, uh, you know, we have to uh, confront this God of love, but also a God of judgment. Uh, we, we really 
there. So most of the time we, we do things by appointment. You know, a member of the church will have you know, a friend, uh, a family to, uh, to be approached and to, to tell him again you know, how things are, uh, are going with their Christ and how they can become, you know, by become a, a child of God. Yeah, I wanted to uh, ask you to pray. Um, obviously, we we the middle of you know business people. Uh, I guess this has always been the part of the church. You know, they might not even have this COVID thing. They might have other things. But hey, we just go in and we ask the Lord you know, to, to protect us to you know, whichever. Uh, this being you know the houses or hospitals and so on. Um, that this you know might not have another side effect you know, the viruses that we have uh, and from that we just uh, let the lord be you know showing his grace and mercy in the ministry that we have here the churches we are uh, we, we're planting uh, they all growing and growing maturity sometimes i sense that they can go really bad or they can go really you know the sky up really cemented and become mature and so on. Uh, only the Lord knows, you know, we're just, we're just working and doing whatever we have to do. And as it goes, you know, trusting the Lord every day. Uh, we will send you some of the photos, but, you know, we, uh, we put in some, we break in some grounds and we have bought materials and some, uh, some steel columns and has been welded up and so on. Pray for the for the church, you know, from Ebenezer, which is in El Doradito, and uh, that these people really can become, you know, mature in the Lord. It is a combination of, you know, the uh, the Europeans, you know, you want to call it that way, the European blood, and, and, and the native people here. Very, very funny, you know, sometimes how we have to go back. Um, because of the way how we understand life and how they do. Uh, but they, they actually show us quite a lot of uh, respect for each other and, and willing to love, you know, and, and feel God, which is all there. Um, obviously we pray, you know, that the Lord might keep us, you know, safe, healthy, and obviously for the whole family. Uh, you know, when we get, get a little bit, you know, in quarantine, we realize that how much we actually miss our family, you know, children, grandchildren. But I, I ask you to pray for that, and thank you for being, you know, in, in, uh, for keeping us always in your prayers, for your support. Uh, I'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, obviously, Pastor Mancha has, has been uh, someone that sent a note here, and there, and there, uh, consistently, and, and it's a great encouragement to us. So I thank you for that. And I, I praise the Lord for your faithfulness in your service as well in Australia. Okay, have a, have a good day, and may the God, may God, uh, may God love you and keep you safe. Thank you, brother. Bye. All right, take your Bible, Psalm 126. We're going to be looking at something quickly this morning. Next Sunday morning, we have a video that we'll hear from um, Brother Shemesh in Thailand, and a little bit of an update of the ministry there as well. And um, this morning as well as tonight and over the next several, next week, if you do have your faith promise card and you do have no uh, afraid and you know what you want to give um, to missions to help continue supporting the Portillos and all the missionaries that we support, um, you can do so and just write that down, fold it up, put it in the offering box. We'll add those up and that will give us what we can do for missions in the coming year as well. Now, going on with that um, idea of, of putting that in, we, this morning in the growth group we talked about God's provision. And then we thought it's also fitting as we were looking at this passage of scripture and I was reading through, I try to read through a couple of psalms a day and I was reading through this psalm. And I had some thoughts in this psalm that I just wanted to share with you about having great expectations for a new beginning. A new beginning. 
And yes, we're New Beginnings Baptist Church, but we're having a new beginning in a new building, right? Some people realize you're in a new building. Good, good. You haven't quite fallen asleep yet. And uh, so there's some things that I just wanted to share with you, some encouragement, and as well as, you know, the way God provides. And so as you're praying about what you have to do, if you've never done anything like that before, it can be quite intimidating. And uh, if you have done it before, you know, hey, God's provided in the past. And encourage it and he'll provide in the future. Uh, but as we begin to, to look at this psalm, it's a very interesting psalm. A very story uh, about a, a church that was in a little Swiss village. And uh, it had one of the, the most beautiful church buildings in their region. And, and one of the things that attracted everyone was it was one of those churches that had a beautiful pipe organ. Now, some people love organs and pipe organs and things like that. Some people don't, whatever. Um, but that has a beautiful pipe organ. People would come from kilometers away when this organ started playing. And they would just come to hear it and be there. But uh, one day, the organ fell silent. Musicians and experts from all over the world tried to repair this organ. And no one succeeded. Then one day, an old man appeared out of nowhere. They asked for permission to try to fix the organ. And they thought, well, everyone else, all the world-renowned repair people in the world have tried. We don't know who this guy is, but he can't do any worse than what's already taking place. And so they let the old man work for several days on this organ. And all of a sudden, seven days later, the whole community again was filled with the pipe organ. And people were heading to the church. When the old man finished playing this pipe organ again, someone asked him, Sir, how in the world did you fix it? He said, Well, it was I who built this organ 50 years ago. I created it, so I know how to restore it. I'll tell you something, as you read Psalm 126, it's in what are called the Psalms of Ascent. They were hymns of the Jewish pilgrims would sing as they traveled to Jerusalem for different holy feasts. And these, these Psalms of Ascent go from Psalm 120 all the way to Psalm 134. And these are some things that they would sing. And, and if you notice something about the Jewish psalms or songs here, they recall stuff that God did. They remember things in the past and they, they bring them up again. And so as we look at Psalm 126, the very first thing I can see that we're challenged about new beginnings is anytime you have a new beginning in life, and anytime you have a new start in life, whether that's you know a new job, whether that's a new where for education, whether that's you know, a new building for a church, whether, you know, you just got married and there's a, there's a new beginning, or whether, you know, in a marriage you, you need to start fresh and, and have a new beginning. Uh, you can look back and consider what God has already done. All throughout the Bible, God challenges the people of Israel to set up memorials, correct? What's a memorial? It causes you to look to remember what that stands there for. And verses 1 to 3 focus on a sovereign and a gracious act of God. Look at me at verses 1 to 3. It says, When the Lord, Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then as our mouths filled with laughter and our tongue with singing, then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. You notice it change. The focus is on uh, who Christ and who God is and, and what he did. And these four historical events celebrated in the psalm, you know, it's not the result of a wise decision of a king. There's no heroic soldier here. There's no great judge like we learned about Shamgar uh, this morning. No. There's no some spiritual devotion to God by His people. God did what took place in the song. God did it. The same thing is true for us. 
It is God's blessings that we now enjoy. You see, this causes us to remember though that, that the Lord has done good, great things for us. The ancient Jews would sing this psalm in reference to some historical acts of divine intervention. Now, when you study the life of Israel and you read it in the Bible, did God divinely act on their behalf a few times? Yes. You read the story about the parting of the Red Sea? With their, you know, like, did God divinely act on their behalf? Absolutely. Hey, one guy with an ox code being able to take on an army of 600 soldiers. Do you think that might have a little bit more to do with God than the guy with the ox code? I think it does. And we can go on David and Goliath, you know. One little teenage boy with a sling and a rock going against the champion of the people of the Philistines, you know. One whose weaver's, you know, the, the spear was like a weaver's beam. And it took one man to carry his shield in front of him. That's how big it was. And by the way, Goliath was a huge guy. I mean, Goliath, if you, if you studied out, was, you know, somewhere close to nine some odd feet tall. You know, if you think you, you've seen some tall people, that's tall. Hey, if you're picking a basketball team, he's picked number one. He doesn't have to be able to move, he doesn't have to be able to jump, he doesn't have to be able to shoot. He just has to be able to hold his hand up in the air. Right? And if he holds his hand up in the air, he has to duck to get to the hoop, you know. Most of us, we have to jump to get to it. He'd have to, you know... How does Goliath dunk? He bends down. He, you know, he does a squat and then he, he dunks. God did great things for them. See, what did he do? Well, first of all, look what it says in verse 1. It says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. You know something? The Lord often turns our dreams into realities. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Is it, listen, you know, God does many great things. It, it was like, you know, he, he, he made, we were, we were like them that dream. He restored Zion. He restored them. And the people of God prayed so hard. They cried so much. They waited so long for things to change. And when they, when the Lord intervened, they could not believe. I don't know what's going on in your life, but has something ever happened that when God stepped in and God intervened and God did something in your life, it just blew your mind that even God could do that for you? Maybe it's the time that you accept the cross of your Savior and you think, oh, no one's ever going to accept me. Well, God does. Maybe it was, you know, you prayed and begged God like Hannah for a child and God stepped in and used different things and gave you a child and you're like, wow, look what God did. Maybe you thought, well, I'll never own my own home or whatever, and God provided a way for you to own your own home through hard work and, you know, wise spending and all and saving. All. It could be a number of things. But you know what? God has done some great things, and He can turn our dreams into reality. Hey, I remember, what was it? 2014. I remember, what's that now? Seven years ago. Uh, when, um, when Sylvester and I came and we looked at that hall down there. I remember walking around looking at it, and I remember saying to him, this place is huge. I don't know that we'll ever fill it. And he looked at me and said, just play it. God probably has bigger things in store. Have you looked around? <laughs> hey, God can bring dreams into reality, correct? When they said they were building a new hall, did anyone have this in, in I did not have this in my mind. But God can turn dream into reality. And God can take if, uh, a group of people that are willing to you know, love God and obey God and follow God and be, you know, and, and be a witness for Him. And God can build something that is beyond any of our imaginations. That can impact you know, the world, and you, you hear you know, Brother, Brother Portillo speak, and he, he thanks you for your support. And you think, oh, well, the sacrifice I do is not making a big difference. Brother Portillo's family, they are planting three churches at the same time. How's that happen? Because people sacrifice and give. You'll hear from uh, Brother Shemesh next week, and, and there's many things there going on. And, and, and you know, the, the Paneros, hopefully soon you'll hear from them in person. We'll hear about what God's doing there, and on and on we could go. 
The Lord turns our dreams into reality. In fact, uh, this is one of the ways to tell if God has done something or not. You want to know what that is? If you can explain it, God probably hasn't done it. If you can't explain it, probably God's at work. You're looking at me really funny. If, if I can explain it, more than likely God didn't do it. I just figured something out, right? Have you ever had something happen in your life? You just, you just can't explain it. God did that. God changes people's lives. I can tell you stories, the story of people that I've seen that, that, that they're one way and then they accept Christ as their Savior and God did a work in their life and they're a completely different person. Second thing we see, look at verse 2. Uh, then was our mouth filled with laughter and our song was singing. Hey, if you were here this morning uh, for growth groups, we, we read about the children of Israel. This morning when we read about the children of Israel, were their mouth filled with laughter and song? Or was it filled with whinging and complaining? God did something in their life. It's filled with laughter and song. Um, and our tongue was singing. Then said they among the heathens, the Lord hath done great things for them. You see, uh, God can do great things. And the second thing that we see is the Lord can turn our sorrow into joy. Hey, when God's at work, not only will, you know, sometimes he brings your dreams into reality, but he can turn your sorrow into joy. This statement describes a dramatic way the Lord restored Israel. He restored Zion. Look at Psalm 137, we'll read verses 1 to 4. This records the lament of God's people during the Babylonian captivity. Psalm 137, verses 1 to 4. It says, By the rivers of Babylon they were set down, yea, we wept. When we remembered Zion, we hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of those songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Sounds pretty sorrowful to me, doesn't it? What God, what did they say in, in Psalm 127, uh, Psalm 126, when God had restored and, and returned them from the captivity and restored Zion, what happened? God took that sorrow that they had on the banks of the Babylonian River and they said, how, how can we sing the songs of joy of our country in a foreign land? To now they're saying, God has filled our mouths with laughter and our tongue with a song. He's turned our sorrow into joy. Because he's given us this new beginning to, to know him, to love him, to serve him, and to be where he would have us to be. They were so defeated, they were depressed, they were demoralized. They, and, and they deemed it would be wrong and impossible to sin. But the Lord stepped in. The Lord restored their, the Lord put their mouths back filled with, with laughter and with song. You know, God is so good that it ought to make you laugh sometimes. I'm not talking about this crazy holy laughter that people, you know, fall out of their seats in church laughing. No, 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 I'm not talking about that. But if you think about how good God is, it does not make you just kind of shake your head and say, wow, I don't deserve this. This, this is amazing. This is just, wow, how do we even get here? God is so good that it ought to make you sometimes, I know some of you aren't hot people, some of you aren't fine people. Hey, just because we're in a new building that's big, you can still sing out. I'm sure Brother June wouldn't mind, would you? Might be helpful. Hey, I know if I have a lead singing in that no one else, and everybody's looking at me, it's like, mm. but sing out. Put it to joyfulness. You have to shout for joy sometimes. It's okay. Not understanding the full implication you know, uh, of the words that this one unbelieving critic said to Charles Spurgeon. Here's what she said. She warned him. She said, Mr. Spurgeon, if the Lord ever does save me, you'll never hear the end of it. 
That was a criticism. You know what? God, God's not worth saving, but if He does, you'll never hear the end of it. Guess what? It ought to be that way. If God saved you, you should never hear the end of it. You should be excited. You should be joyful. Because the Lord had saved, He helped, He delivered, He strengthened, He heals. You should never let Him hear the end of that, that thankfulness for that. Now, not only has the Lord done great things for us, but here's what He's also done. The Lord has done great things for us for all to see. Do you understand when God is working in your life, when God is working in the life of New Beginnings Baptist Church, He's not just working in the life for us to see what God is doing in our church. He's working in our church so that way others who look in and see us can see what God's doing. Does that make sense? See, what do you mean? Look with me at verse 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen. Now, who's saying this? This is the heathen saying this. The Lord hath done great things for them. It's not saying the Lord is. This, if it were Israel saying this, the Lord has done great things for us, correct? But they're saying the Lord has done great things for them. Do you know what? When God's working in your life, even those who don't know God as their Savior can see it and know. It can be a testimony. It can be a great thing. It can speak volumes. In times of distress, you know, unbelievers may taunt believers for having an, you know, an absentee God, but the psalmist says the Lord has been so good that even the unbelieving nations had acknowledged that the Lord has done great things for them. Do you know people all around us should acknowledge the great things that God's doing? And we should acknowledge the great things that God is doing. Look at verse 3. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. You know, there's a switch there. The Lord has done great things for them. Now the Lord has done great things for us. Hey, if those around you can see that God's doing great things in your life, then you should at least be able to say God's doing great things in your life, correct? You know, hey, when God does a work, you can't deny it. You can't change it. And, and others are going to see it. That's a wonderful testimony. It's a great thing. When we were, uh, when I was giving the tour here and I was getting uh, shown how to do all this stuff and drop these things and, you know, run the place, um, the guy looks at me and he said, how many people go to that church anyway? I said, well, you know, if, if everyone who's a part of our church all shows up and you're all together under the roof at one time, which hasn't happened yet, it'd be fun to see it happen. I said, it's about 70 or 80 people that are, are part of the church. He stopped and he looked at me and he said, you're absolutely kidding me. And I said, no, no, no. And he goes, but I thought it was like a small group. I said, well, that is kind of a small group. He goes, no, it's not. He said, I remember one time, like, I was there and I looked in and there was like 10 or 15 people there. I said, yeah, we've had that too. We've had that too. And he was like, wow, what's going on that so many people are there? I said, well, I'm glad you asked. I said, God's working. And God's changing lives. And people are coming to the place where they, you know, uh, accept Christ as their Savior and they want to get in church and want to uh, get involved and, and want to be around other believers. And then we, we, together, we go out and we try to make an impact in our community and the world. And he looks at me and he goes, interesting thing. You know what? If someone who's never been can say, you know what? Wow, God's, that, 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 that's amazing. Shouldn't we be able to stop and say, well, God, thank you. You see, others can see it. It seems kind of out of place that others would acknowledge the great things that God is doing, but those who are saved don't. But sometimes we fail to recognize the goodness of God right in the middle of the world. 
we, we, we got to be careful not to be blinded to that. Other people can see the favor of God on your life as you could be blinded to it. You're just used to it. So let me advise you to look around and see the great things happening in your life. See that the Lord has done it. And see that He did it for you and not against you. And see the great things that God has done for you and be done. Be excited. But here's what I want to tell you this. We talked about what the Lord has done, correct? That's past tense. Yes? I want to see the second thing. Look ahead with confidence that God can do it again. That God can work still. That God can continue His work. Look at me in verse 4. He says, Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. He says, Turn again. Do it again. Hey, hey you, you've gotten us out of captivity before. Turn the street and do it again. Work in our lives again. John Wesley wrote a hymn that says, Where is the joy I knew when once I saw the Lord? This is the question that's asked here in verse 4 6. But in verse 4, the psalmist prays that the Lord will restore Zion again. This sudden dramatic shift from a joyful remembrance to a humble petition should confront us with the fact that times of celebration do not last forever. Victories don't last forever, do they? Even when they're a direct result of God's intervention, they don't last forever. So what do we do? Well, if we're going to look ahead with confidence for God to work again, we need to uh, pray and ask God to be our help. Because only God can do what only God can do. What should you do when you find yourself at life's dramatic turning points? Well, one word. Pray. Turn to God. He says, restore her. He, he restore the fortunes again. This is the only prayer request in this psalm. And it's a simple petition. Restore us again, Lord. Help us. The same terminology is used in verse 1. Say, the Lord restored us. And they turn and the psalmist says, can you do it again, Lord? Can you work again? Can you help us out one more time? This is a celebration of what God has done, but it's used here as a prayer of what God is going to do in the future to restore them, to help them. To rebuild them. To work in them. Literally, the psalmist prays, Lord, what you've done for us before, please do for us again. You know what? Sometimes I think it's good for us as Christians to stop and say, God, I know you've done great things, but can you still work in my life again today? Can you help me today to remember, to be obedient, to do these things? And then lastly, we see this. In this idea, not only was it there this prayer for help, but there is our recognition of our responsibility and the principles of the harvest. Look at verse 5. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. You know what we need to do with this, this idea of sowing and reaping? Have you ever realized that if you're sharing the gospel with someone, wouldn't it be nice if everyone you ever shared the gospel with accepts it the first time they ever hear it? Wouldn't that be cool? And everyone accepts it, like no one says no. Wouldn't that be awesome? How many of you have tried enough that you realize it's not that way? Everybody? Anybody? It's not that way, is it? Here's what it says. Look past the sorrow of sowing. I don't know if you've ever done any farming or any done any gardening. 
Um, but you know what? Sowing is not fun. Have you ever tried to sow some seeds? I guess there are some people out there that would say it's fun. But you know, you've got to dig and you've got to clear out you know, the old stuff and you've got to you know, remove the rocks and you've got to put the seed down and you've got to know what seed you're putting in because this seed needs this type of soil and that seed needs that type of soil and this deep seed needs to go this deep and this seed needs to go that deep and da -da -da -da. they're going to have this certain space for their roots and they'll kill each other and all this, a lot of complicated stuff. You know what I've learned? It's not fun. It's not joyful. It can be quite sorrowful and difficult. Now some people go, well, I love it. It's fun. Good. You can be a resident gardener, right? But you know what? As we look at that, there, there, there is that, that, that intermediate period between sowing and reaping uh, that all goes along with it. That we need to remember, you know what? We need to endure the sorrow of sowing for the joy of reaping. We need to look forward to the success of your sowing. It says, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Right? If they sow in tears, they sh it doesn't say you might reap. It says you shall reap. And if you share the gospel enough with enough people, there's going to be someone who says yes. I've, I've shared with the, the, the testimony that, uh, the, about how Brother Nisi, and, and you, some of you met him as he spoke for us last year. And by the way, I pray for their family. They're both in the hospital in the Philippines with COVID at the moment. Uh, and he's not as well as you should be with diabetes and heart issues and being almost 79. Um, so do, do be in prayer for them. But he, his famous thing, he always used to share the gospel with someone, they would reject him as we were walking away out of earshot. He would look at me and go, that wasn't the one. We'll find one. Someone will listen. And we'd go and talk to the next person. Not, not the one either. And sometimes it was person one and sometimes it was person 50 that we talked to that day. But you know what? He would not stop until he found the one that would listen. Now, that doesn't mean they got saved or anything like that, but they would at least listen. But you know what? You should look forward to the success of your soul. The language of this text uh, it says, you know, there's one trip he's sowing and, and reaping, but the farmer goes out weeping to sow his precious seed in, in that unresponsive soil. But while he is out in that field, God can intervene. Maybe you find yourself at a place where your faith is tested. Your love is rejected. Your kindness is unappreciated. Your labor is criticized. Your sacrifices are forgotten. Can I tell you, don't give up. You may go out weeping, but you can come back home rejoicing. The song says, sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness. Sowing in the noontime and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of creeping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. The ultimate proof that God can restore you is in Jesus Christ himself. He sowed in tears. Oh, he weeps. And John, and John told me he did the end. Indeed, Jesus sowed his life for us in tears. But on the third day, there were shouts of joy as he rose from the dead, being able to give to us eternal life. I read a story about uh, a sharecropper who labored in the valley. And the rains became floods in the valley, and they would wipe out their crops. At one point, the son said to the father that he was, he's leaving, he's done, I'm not doing this anymore. He couldn't take it no more. But the father encouraged him to hang in there a little bit longer. Something had to change, and it did. The owner of the land came by one day, and he saw that their fields in the valley, and he told them, that's impossible to grow anything there. Just move them up on top of the hill. So that way they can, they can do what they need to do. Hey, you may be in the valley, and the floods may wash your best efforts away. You may feel like giving up, but I have good news for you. There is one who sits in heaven and looks down. And in you hanging in there, he will, 
he can say, you know what? They're faithful in little, I'll make them faithful in much. They're, they're, they're busy and they're obedient here. They, they've stayed faithful, so I will rejoice them in much. The song says, I'm, I'm pressing on the upper way, new heights I'm gaining every day, so praying as I honor the Lord, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Hey, it's wonderful to remember what God has done. But let's not forget what God can do and do it again. And let's, let's keep in prayer and let's stay busy about sowing and reaping, knowing this, if God has done something in the past by just by prayer and by obedience, guess what He can do again? To begin. And to begin. You say, why? Because God is the God of new beginnings. And God is the God who wants to see people obediently following Him. The question is, are we willing to not just remember the past, but to live in the present? for God to do it. Father, we come before you. Lord, we thank you so much for the challenge from your word. Lord, we thank you for the reminder from the psalm that the children of Israel remembered all that you had done for them. Lord, they weren't just satisfied with that. They, they prayed and asked you to do it again. Lord, history tells you did we thank you for that. And Lord, we thank you so much for being our Savior, for sending your Son to die for our sins. And Lord, I pray that you help us if we're here today, may not cross our Savior, may we not leave today without getting that settled. But Lord, if we uh, do know you as our Savior, may we be faithfully trusting you, doing everything we can in our part, but knowing more that you provide. Lord, as we start out this new chapter in the, the life and, and ministry and history of New Beginning Baptist Church, Lord, may we realize all that we've done has got us to this point. And Lord, may we be excited and, and obedient and prayerful as you do do it again. To the next point where you have us to be and to, to serve you and to reach people the gospel. Lord, may you continue to bless and Lord, may we never forget and that all that is taking place is all because of you. And you'll be ever thankful for that. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you for that. The last song we're going to sing uh, this morning is To God Be the Glory. May all stand and we will sing To God Be the Glory.
for I thank you once again for coming out. If I can be a help to you in any way, I'll be available after service. Um, if you are able to, you have a few moments, please don't leave right away. Uh, right outside that door, they'll have serving there. Uh, right out the kitchen window, coming into the hallway, um, there'll be cakes available. So blueberry cheesecake, salted caramel cheesecake, and uh, chocolate mud cake or something of that nature uh, will be available to celebrate Father's Day. Fathers, if you're here with us, again, thank you for all that you do. And we appreciate you. And uh, there's a small gift. Please come and get it. It has, uh, we put a variety of things in the kits. Some people like chocolate. Some people don't like chocolate. So there's chocolate and there's non-chocolate. Some people like coffee. Some people like hot chocolate. So there's some with coffee, some with hot chocolate. Uh, but everyone gets the mug and the pen. Um, on the pen in the video, it says, talk about the world's best dad. It says world's best dad on there for you. Um, and that's available for you. So please come grab your um, gift and make sure you get your lid that goes with your cup that goes underneath it. Uh, so that way you can use the cup as well. And if you're really particular about your chocolate, you can kind of look and see which bar you want and first in, best dressed. Okay? No fights for the bars. <laughs> if someone already has your bar and you don't need you know, you can trade it or whatever you want, but let's keep it that way. Alright. Look forward to seeing you back tonight. Five o'clock. We'll have our evening service right here. And look forward to seeing you then. Father, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for this time again that you've given us to come together. And Lord, we just thank you for all that you're doing, all that you have done in the past, but Lord. Uh, may we not just settle for that, but Lord, may we be excited about what we're doing in the present and the future. Uh, Lord, may we keep this as a matter of prayer before you. Lord, may we be actively involved um, in the harvest as you have us, have us be. And Lord, may we be actively involved in following you and building our relationship with you and now keeping you in first place in our lives. Lord, may you bless us as we go from this place. Uh, bring us back safely uh, this evening. Uh, bless the food to follow as we take of that in the fellowship. And again, Lord, thank you for each of the fathers represented here, uh, knowing that not one of us is perfect. The Lord, I just pray that you help us to uh, do our best uh, to be able to follow you. And Lord, may you help us as we uh, do the responsibilities you've given us as dads. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.